Hey guys, we'll talk about uh, CMND. Um, sadly, I was not awake for LLOR and N NRSN, so the 50%, 80% faders today I was not in. So I, I had this pretty much, is pretty much what I had. Um, you know, my type of trading, I usually only focus on two or three tickers at the most per day. Um, I, I really don't try to spread myself too thin and short everything that pops. And, um, you know, I have some friends who do that, who make a lot of money doing it, but it's just not what I do. Um, and yeah, uh, this was, this was, uh, frustrating because I, I'm very, um, small green on this, uh, on this trade. Um, we'll look at the book, but I actually don't have my chart with me. Um, but I'll just tell you what I did. Uh, I shorted this pop. I short this pop uh, in the 550s, um, and I ended up just taking a tiny bit off on the $5 reclaim because I was, I was reading the bids on the book map, and then I got out the rest on the 5.6 push. Um, so I was kind of like a wash, uh, maybe small loss, and then I long this on this candle. I long this in the 5.7s um, after the VWAP swipe. Uh, and I'll show you why. But the actually, the much better long was this long. This long was super clean. This was a super, super, super clean long um, in the 5.9s and low 6s. Uh, super. This is a classic short trap. This is a, you know, 6.5 high day clear out. You know, they dump it 15%, and then they rip the shorts in their face. Very, like, the book map on this, I'll show you. Very clean long. Um, I should have added, but I already had a good average, and I need to get better at adding into my average when I'm, um, when the pattern's there. And then I actually had to go AFK and I missed my trade, which is this one. This 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 is like this is a classic long trap. You know, you get again, these deep pullbacks are good longs. These like little consolidated, you know, flaggy retail flagging you know, over the VWAP support. Oh VWAP support. Oh, look at the breakout. You know what I mean? Like this is this is a retail trap. And what they do, of course, is they they swipe it down to 608 and then they market order it 10% in about less than a minute, right? And they swiped the 6.5 ask and then all the buying just completely stalled. No bids following it up and then they and then they pulled it into the downhaul. Um so this ended up being an A plus trade. Um Oh, and new ass ended up showing up at 6.6 .6 and 5, 6.5 and stuff like that. So, um, but I will say I did take a loss on this really annoyingly. I actually shorted um, this push. I saw the volume come in. I'm like, man, I told my Discord, it's like I'm waiting, which information down below, by the way, I'm like, I'm waiting for a bigger backside move. You know, I see VWAP, I see 6, I see these lower highs. I'm like, man, it'd be cool to get some type of, you know, manipulated move. Um, of course, if you've been watching my videos, I, I keep talking about how these quick dumps create all this empty space, right? So anytime there's a lot of empty space like this, it likes to get attacked on the backside, right? On manipulated tickers. Um, so I had kind of that whole thesis in mind. And then I saw the crazy, crazy volume come in. And there were stacks and stacks, we'll see this on the book, stacks and stacks of ass up here that I shorted into. I had 6.3s. I mean, I held through this push because the ass didn't completely get broken. And then I actually got stopped out on this push right here. And then it dumped. <laughs> uh, but what actually ended up happening was they swiped all this lower high, this lower high, this lower high. They swiped pretty much every single lower high below high a day. And then they pulled it. And I was I was so hyper-focused on this this big volume move in the book, the order book, that I missed the bigger picture on this trade, and I ended up missing the down only fade. Um, you might be wondering, okay, why didn't I just short this bounce here? Um, because I'm manipulating tickets, you never know what's gonna happen, right? So the moment you start justifying chasing is the moment you start losing a lot of money. So um, I recommend trying to get better reads at the top as opposed to, uh, as opposed to, um, what do you call it? chasing weakness because oh the stock has to go down now right like that whole thinking um so uh cmmb uh, i'll show you the book in the pre-market and market open this whole structure
So the reason I took 5.5s was because, again, like when it first popped, the order. Oh, you don't see what I'm saying. When it first popped, so this is the first. This is you know the 8:50 a.m. pop. The book is really thin to the upside, really thin to the downside. So in my mind, I have no edge here. It's like where's my edge on this pop where the order book it has infinite squeeze potential or infinite fake potential. You know, it's like <laughs> it's like I want something a little cleaner. You know, they throw up a bid here and they squeeze to new highs. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. On this squeeze, are there any bids following it up, right? And initially, you see one here, right? He actually gets taken out, um, and it pushes again. But now, now what's very interesting is I'm seeing on this second push, I see this new ask, new ask, new ask, and I see no bids, right? Like, this bidder got taken out, which means he's not there anymore, right? Um, so, and, and also, I see some of these guys up here. I see some of these guys here. I see, I love to see new offers come, not even just existing offers, but also new ones come in. And I definitely like to see new offers come in pushing the stock down, like these these guys trying to short and not getting filled, right? Um, you know, so I ended up shorting into this right before the big crack. I'm like, cool. Um, you know, and I see this guy in the 5.6s. I'm like, let me just risk these guys up here. Um, I see the five bidder. Five bidder, but I'm noticing books really emptied up. So I'm always, especially the guy who who I was risking, kind of went away. I'm like, well, okay, um, let me see what the reaction is down here. Um, you know, I thought, oh man, once this five guy gets breaking broke, this is gonna be uh, like a fat ten percent crack right down to these guys, and then cracked like I saw it cracked five percent and just get instantly market ordered back up, and then this new five dollar bid showed up and i was like this ain't good so i took a tiny bit off um but ultimately as i was thinking about 5.6s as my risk um so i was you know when i was looking at these pushes i'm like okay new offers are coming in like bids are getting taken out I'm like okay um but then it just kind of consolidated five dollars got stacked even more that's not good and then once it started pushing up to 5.6s um I ended up taking it off uh, into this push, right? So um, probably just, uh, I actually can't even, it was, it was a small loss maybe. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I didn't short into this ask. I thought, like, this was just one guy at 2,000 shares. It looked okay. I like that there's no bids following this up. But I don't know, I thought this was kind of starting to get really strong, right? Like. This is starting to, from a bigger perspective, you know, you, I always have to also, you have, also have to look at the chart. I think it's about like trading off the book is trading off the book can be very dangerous because sometimes what the book is showing you doesn't match up with the larger context of what's being shown on the chart. Um, and on CMMD, I thought what was possibly bullish was the volume, even just in the pre-market, the volume of the pre-market was already getting just as big as the volume on these pushes, right? And pre-market volumes, of course, going to be a tiny fraction of what market open volume is going to be. So I was like, I told my Discord room, I was like, I was like, you know, this volume is so much bigger than what this push was, right? So much bigger. Um, so that's a bullish factor, right? Like, um, this is going to be a much higher volume day than what the the initial push was so i thought that was bullish i thought that you know the stock was making new high day new high day right it was like doing this grindy accumulating type of price action you know when it starts to get grindy and the volume's really consistent i consider that bullish this was only up like 40 percent on a day and the market's been strong i consider that bullish so i'm like really adding a lot of different bullish factors in my head as this is moving and i was actually kind of bullish this um price action this made like a retail push that topped right away but i actually thought this was bullish because so i've been short stocks where you get kind of like this double top long trap pattern you know it stalls right under high day and then pulls um because i was i was afraid of the market open volume pushing the stock i was like so i wasn't really looking to short this you know i the reason i shorted this was because i thought this might just pop do a quick pop and fade, right? This would pop into some backside volume and fade. But once 
you know, the soaking and the rigging and the volume started coming in on this play, then I'm like, all right, I'm going to become more bullish on this name, um, which is why I really wasn't looking to short this candle, uh, especially being so close to uh, market open. Um, I thought, you know, there's always a chance that at market open, they use market open volume to rig a stock and push it, which is why market open could be a great time to long if the structure is good. Um, but like I said, I really don't like longing at 930 because it's kind of too, too crazy. But what I saw at 930 is something I always like to see when I go long. It's like to see an initial push. I like to see support get swiped. And I like to see, oh, sorry, you can't see this. Oh, wait. You can't see this. Wait a minute. Sorry. Um, so here's the push. Market open push. Retail chases. There's no bid support. It pulled, which is not a good thing. You don't want to chase long if there's no bids, right? Um, it pulls to where the bids actually are. Empty order book. No bids. And I actually just started instantly long. I actually thought, um, given the structure, given that this is like a mini VWAP swipe, into bids, it's, it's, it's swiping, you know, the market open lows, it's swiping um, these pre-market lows, like it's, it's swiping a lot of nice support levels where it would make sense for a rigger to throw up some bids and rotate it. And then I just started hitting it, shorted a little bit, added into the confirmation. I actually had like 570s on this. Um, and then uh, I actually held through all this. It was actually a little bit scary because it looks like there's like four stacks of ass and no bids it's, and it looks like a great short and i could see why people would think that but again like i think this is where the your understanding of of pre-market structure of volume of of market cycles of you know like again i'm like i i thought the bullish factors that were adding up to this kind of would override override those ask in this you know pre-market um, high day would get squeezed because all these asks were right below pre-market high day and so my, my thesis with longing off of the support swipe here would be that you know the, this painted you know low you know, lower high you know this painted like 6.2 level 6.15 level would end up getting pushed right so um but actually a much easier long even better than this was this this oh sorry man <laughs> sorry was um this 936, you know, high day clear out, clears out 6.5, and they pull it, right? So a lot of shorts will short that, right? A lot of shorts are short in a half dollar resistance into, you know, pre-market high getting cleared out, right? And they get the confirmation they want. And this is classic, man. So you get a high day clear out. You get, like, the 10 15% pullback, and it's just bids, not only just bids, but follow up bid, follow up bid, follow up bid, follow up, like just like, and then it's just nothing but empty space. And you can just long, you know, you wait to see how it acts at support here. And you can long right here. You can long straight in the six, like 5.9. And you can long these rotations at like 605 and stuff like that. And, um, and you can see on the book that there's nothing up to, you know, both half dollar, which is right where high day is. And which is why the squeeze happens, right? Um, and then the, the retail, uh, long trap, here's your flag, higher lows, lower highs. Um, here's your push. Um, and yeah, you could see this was actually perfect. This is actually a perfect, um, oh, sorry. It was this one. This one is actually kind of nice though. Um, but yeah, here's $6 support. Higher low, higher low. Here's your little retail chase. Anytime you see a potential long trap, look at the bids. No bids. And then, yeah, there's a 6.5 ask, but in this case, I like to see what the buying looks like above 6.5, right? Because if this book is so empty, this should continue straight through high day, right? And it pushes, pulls back, tries to push again, pulls back, and then all, you can see the buying. You can see how much buying there is here. And you can see the buying stall here. And then on the pullbacks, we start to get new ask. We start to get new ask. Especially the 6.6 .6 guy ends up being, you know, 11,000 shares, 5,000 shares. And now you have some decent risk levels, right? You get a very bullish, uh, bearish, long trappy move. And then you get 
ass. You know, I, I, I would have short right away into this, honestly. Um, just again, like just looking at this, um, you know, this, this higher low on VWAP structure, lower high, retail chases the push. Um, yeah, honestly, as soon as the 6.5 got broken and didn't go, even after like 5, 10 seconds, I would have just went in, just went in right away. Uh, but sadly, it wasn't here. Missed the fade. And then, yeah, I'll show you what happened here. I, um, I'll show you how I misread this. So we go over here. Do, do, do. So here's that push. Here's that big, oh, God, I keep doing this, man. Sorry. Here's that big high volume push towards 6.4 6.5 and i'm zooming in i'm like oh man there's no bid support look how there's no bids down here right even on the pullbacks there's no bids right because sometimes you get a big push it pulls back and the bids show up um and then you get another push into this 6.4 guy 6.5 i'm like all right let me get into the 6.3s right let me get in up here so my risk is you know these two guys right um because you know i thought from a bigger perspective that you know retail would chase the volume push it would pull back it might give one more push but i thought man this is gonna just top out this is just a backside move um which is why i saw it test 6.5 here it took out 6.5 actually but then the buying slowed down right and then it cracked i was like oh okay um this should fade this 100 percent should fade right um my 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 ask that i was risking held there's no buying above that. Even if the 6.5 broke, I would see, A, if it like if it just kept squeezing the 6.6s and stuff, I probably would have just got out. But I do like to see how it gets tested. Um, and I like to see how there's no bids. And we actually, if we zoom way out, you can actually see there's almost no bids this entire time. No bids, no bids. So I thought the no bids, I thought backside clear out. I thought 6.4, 6.5 ask is going to hold. Um, and then, is now and then, yeah, man, they ended up, I ended up getting, uh, I ended up taking out all my shares on this push right here. And then they did the pull. <laughs> it's like, so that's the thing about these, um, God, these thin manip, you know, the, the problem down here is that the volume is so thin. It would pull back down here and, and there'd be like no selling and no buying, right? There's no bids, but no selling the push into the no bids <laughs> so it's like no bids and no selling and i was like man I, like i was telling my discord it's like i hate when it gets grindy like this like right like thin grindy stuff like this is not good like if this is a long trap top type move this should just crack weak and crack like it should just it should just pretty much go straight down um but yeah i missed i missed the larger picture on this trade man like i i missed the fact that you know, they were just swiping these lower highs, never going to push high day. And then, look, dude, like, look at the fade. Um, so just a total, you know, I got I got so zoomed in on this price action and volume that I missed um, the actual trade. You know, I probably should have just had my risk higher, maybe sized in a little smaller, had my risk higher, that type of thing. Um, and maybe just held through all this, but this was tough 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 one so yeah and then uh and then yeah nrsn and um this this had this was a biotech that had bad news come out and it dumped and then lr um these were both amazing plays um i just wasn't here on my setup when they happened so <laughs> that's pretty much how it goes um but yeah cmmd um yeah frustrating frustrating one not the easiest read so anyways have a good one guys